Hi, and welcome to this series of videos on why everyone should practice meditation. Um, this series is meant to be an addition to my series on how to meditate. And it was brought about as a result of many comments or questions about uh, not how to meditate, but why or uh, whether ordinary people should meditate whether it's something just for monks or whether it's something that is applicable to people living ordinary everyday lives. And so these videos are an attempt to uh, answer that question and give a response, yes, that these videos are certainly not simply for people who have left the uh, everyday ordinary uh, life uh, to live in the forest or so on, that these, these meditation techniques are totally applicable to everyday life. So these are the top five reasons why everyone should practice meditation. And the first reason is because meditation is something which purifies the mind. When you practice meditation, it brings about a state of purity and clarity in one's mind. Now, this is when we look at the ordinary state of being, the ordinary state of, of our minds, we can see that in our own minds, if we're willing to be honest with ourselves, that we have many things which we would rather uh, do without. Things like anger, things like uh, greed or addiction, things like worry, stress, uh, things like fear, anxiety, um, and many things which we would maybe be able to to admit to ourselves um, are a cause for suffering for ourselves, are a cause for suffering for other people. These sort of things that when people look at us, they, they are turned off by when they see in us, when they see that we're conceited, when we see that we are opinionated, when they see that we are jealous, when they see that we are stingy, when they see that we have all these qualities, uh, they, can, they feel uh, turned off by these things. And we ourselves suffer from them. When we have these qualities of mind, it creates suffering for ourselves. It also creates suffering for the people around us. These are all what we call the defilements of the mind. These are things which are uh, undesirable qualities of mind. Now, normally we look at these things and we, we rationalize them in, in many different ways. For instance, we say to ourselves, well, it's just a part of who I am. Uh, or we say these things are, are just human. You know, I'm only human. And so we say, if we didn't have these things, then we would be somehow inhuman. And we say that these things are unavoidable, that it's just who I am, that I can't change who I am, and so on. Uh, and the, the truth is very much different from what we think. Actually, it's uh, very clear that people are able to live without these things, are able to train themselves out of these things. So if we simply say that these things are a part of who I am, it's clear that we're, we're only saying this out of ignorance. We're saying this because we've never tried or we've never been given the tools with which to do away with them. So when people are angry, they say, well, I'm just an angry person. But they've never really looked at the anger to try to understand it and to see where it comes from and to see the disadvantages of it and to really teach themselves and to create an understanding in their minds uh, to the disadvantages of things like anger or things like craving, things like addiction and so on. When we practice meditation, we actually have the ability to overcome these things. And how we do it is we look at them. Because we can say for ourselves, anger is not a good thing. I wish I wasn't so angry. But we aren't actually looking at the anger and we don't actually realize, realize for ourselves on an experiential level that anger is a bad thing. At the moment when we look at the anger, when we focus on the anger, when we say to ourselves, angry, just reminding ourselves of what, what's going on right now, we say to ourselves, angry, 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 for example. We're able to see clearly the anger and sort of teach ourselves. It's like teaching ourselves something that we already know. We know anger is not a good thing, but when we look at it, we really see for ourselves that it's not a good thing. And we're able to do away with it in the here and now. When we have any sort of stress or worry or frustration, we, we can do the exact same thing. And when we, So when we practice meditation, we're able to do away with these things. The other thing that people often say is, if I didn't have these things, you know, who would I be? I'd be somehow inhuman. I, I think this is um, sort of a, an argument, argumentative sort of thing to say, that actually it's um, 
there, there's no reason for us to say that negative things are somehow human. In fact, you can just as easily say that these are inhuman. So when we have cruelty or addiction or jealousy or stinginess or conceit or opinions, or the, all of these things, we can easily say that these things are, are what make us inhuman. Uh, and that if we really wanted to be human or humane, then we would have to develop only the good things. And we should really try to do away with the bad things. There's no reason why we should have to have these things. There's, no, there's nothing intrinsic about them at all. In fact, they're things which we have developed over the years, over the, over the course of our lifetime. You know, as we get older and we get more bitter, we get more angry, or as we uh, indulge in sensua sensuality, we get addicted to things more and more. It's clear that these are not intrinsic in any way to who we are, and they can be changed. Just as we can become more angry, we can also become less angry. And we can train ourselves out of these. So this is the first benefit of practicing meditation. And the number five, counting down, uh, is that meditation helps to make our mind pure because it helps us to understand and to see the difference between good states of mind and bad states of mind, good qualities and bad qualities. and helps us to, to learn how to develop only good qualities because we see clearly uh, the difference and what is the result of of carrying around good things and the result of carrying around bad things. And we can see it's an entirely different thing. So that's uh, number five, and from now on I'll be counting down, going on to number four in the near future. Thanks for tuning in. and